everyone. My name is Destiny Hawkins and I am the designer for Vibrant Designs book covers. In this video, I will be showing you all how to create a simple and easy book cover using a free software called GIMP. So if you are on a budget and would like to create a cover at no cost, then this is the perfect software for you. I do recommend using paid stock images from places like Deposit Photos, which is what I use, or you can use Shutterstock and etc. etc. It's just to avoid getting into any legal issues that can occur. Um, so I would say your best bet at staying out of trouble is using paid stock photos or uh, images that you've taken, you know, pictures you've taken on your own. Um, but if you do want to use some free stock photo websites, you can. Um, I recommend using pixabay.com. All right, so to jump right in, uh, this is the cover that we'll be creating. Um, you can see I got my layers all over here, but I'm going to start from scratch for you guys. Um, first, I would like to show you where to download GIMP. So you want to go to gimp.org slash downloads, and you can go ahead and download the most recent version. All right, so once you have that downloaded and installed into your computer, I want you to go ahead and pull up GIMP. Once it is pulled up, we want to start with a blank canvas. So we're going to go to File, New and set your image size to 2,000 to 3,000 pixels. To make sure that the background is transparent, you want to go down, click Advanced Options, go down to Fill With, click on Background Color, and go to Transparency. All right, so now that we have our blank canvas, we're going to go ahead and just drag the images on here. So I'm going to go to My Files, and you pull up the images you want to use. I did pull these from Pixabay. And I'm just using this as an example, so this will not be for sale, no matter how beautiful it comes out. <laughs> right, and that's going to be the blue color that you guys saw in the first image. So, once you get your images up here, go ahead and just um, hide the images that you don't, that you're not going to use right away. Just go to the main image. Make sure your main image is visible, and hide the other ones. So we have your Fox tool, well, my Fox image, not tool, sorry. And you're going to go over to your scale tool and just scale your image however you want. So you can make it big, small, wide. I'm going to set it however I think looks best. And you should do the same with yours right now. <laughs> and then click scale. All right, and you can use your drag tool to move it wherever you want. So if you want at the top, the bottom, the middle, that's what the drag tool is for. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and click background. And we're going to set the background to black because I think black will look best. And we're going to go to the fill tool. And just make sure that your colors are here is black. So you can just click here. If it's already on red, then just drop it down to black. Um, and then click and it's going to fill your background with black. Then you want to go back up to your fox tool, not your fox tool, your image, my fox image, your image, whatever you're using, <laughs> and right click on the image and go up to add layer mask. And then you want to make sure that white is filled in and click add. So once you do that, you're going to go over to your gradient tool. And this is what's going to give it that blended from uh, the bringing the black in so it looks like it's blending in nice and just getting rid of those hard edges and you want to go to your gradient tool and click on the gradient and go down to FG to BG since that's already set in it's not gonna click for me but it'll click for you after that you want to make sure that this white box is or white page is selected because if you have the image selected you can tell because of the white rim here the white border if you have the image selected and you try to do this, it's going to look something like this, and that's not what you want. So to go back, click Control Z, and then just click on the white image here. Click and drag. And this here is going to give it that uh, faded look where you're just getting rid of the hard edges, making it blend into the black nicely. After that, you just want to click on any random tool to get that to move. Okay, so we're going to do the same steps, but with the top of the image. But first, you want to apply layer mask. Right-click again and go up to add layer mask. Make sure white is filled in. Click add. Go to your gradient tool. 
If you didn't change anything, the um, settings are going to stay the same. You can just go here to the top of the image and drag down. So now it looks nice and blended in from top to bottom. And then just click a random tool. Now we're going to go ahead with that blue color I was using. Click the eyeball. You want to go here to mode and overlay. Now because I don't think that the colors in the background and the blue work very well together, what I'm going to do is click back on the original image, go to colors, desaturate, and then click your modes, whichever one you think looks best. So you have Luma, Lightness, Average, or Value. I think that Lightness looks best. And then you just click OK. After that, you want to go up to the image that you set for overlay and go up to colors, no, filters, sorry, and blur, Gaussian blur. Now, depending on how far you pull this up, it's how blended that image is going to look. So if you have it here, that's what it'll look like. If you just inch it through to see what you think looks best. So I'd stop just about like right here and then go down and click OK. So now we have that fox image with the blue color and a black background and it's blended nicely. So next we are going to click on um, the text tool and start putting our text in. So it would be best if you click on the top image that you have in your layers and then click the text tool. I already have Sensil set in. If you want to use anything else, go ahead. You just click here and you just scroll through whichever font you would like to use. So you're going to click on the image now, and I'm going to go ahead and try and set that to white. Now type in, sorry about that, the little fox. And then you want to hit shift. Make sure your text tool is selected, not your text is selected and then click here and just move it up. Make sure you're still holding the shift button. If not, then this is gonna move instead. Now, you see here how this looks more like a uh, metallic color, it's nice and blended. I just went ahead and first you want to turn these letters into black. Right click on your text and go down to alpha to selection. Then you want to go to your gradient tool and scroll down to crown molding. And now it doesn't even matter what these are because you're going to be using these colors here. Click and drag over the letters. And you can maneuver this however you want and you'll see what changes like where the dark shadows are and the light is. Once you're satisfied, click on a random tool again, click select, none. Now you have this here, the little fox. Now we are going to add the author name. And you can go ahead and choose your font. Make sure it's originally in white so you can see what you're typing in. Go ahead and click at the top or the bottom, wherever you want to put your, uh, your author name at. And then type your author name. Now once you click on all the letters, if you want to go ahead and change the size, just make sure all the letters are selected. Go to font size. And up and down is how you change the size. You can also use the scale tool but I prefer this way. Using the scale tool will do something like this. Wait, that's not the scale tool. <laughs> but I prefer not to do that, so. I'm gonna go ahead and move this up. And it's gonna be the same process if you want it to look just like your um, title. 
So I'm going to go ahead and change the letters to black. The reason you change it black is just because the color shows on top better. Alpha to selection. This is already, the settings are already in for crown molding. I'm just going to drag this over. Select none. Okay. And to make sure it's centered, you want to go here to the alignment tool. Click on your author name. And then just select this middle one. The same for the little fox. I'm going to make sure everything's lined up perfectly. So then for the last thing, we're going to add the subtitle. And that was what? Let's go back. A, a foxtail. <laughs> I'm going to type in a foxtail. And go ahead and do this part on your own without looking at the video. I'm just going to bring this down anyway, even though I can't see it. <laughs> just test yourself. Don't watch the video. Okay, so once you're done adding that, um, I'm actually going to make that just a little smaller. Using the scale tool, of course. And I'm going to go to the drag tool, make sure you're clicking shift, and then a foxtail. I drag it as close to the middle as I can, and then I use my alignment tool. And then if you want that off, I always go down and just click background so I can see the whole thing without having the little images with the border around it. it just distracts you from the beauty. All right, and so here we go. We have the cover, A Little Fox, A Fox Tale by Vimer Design. All right, and just to make some of your finishing touches, you know, just go ahead and do some changes if you would like to. So I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out here. Move this up. I didn't like all the space at the top. And just move the little fox up. I could I could definitely make it bigger, but it's okay because this is just an example and I'm just being picky. Alright, so I would like to thank you all for watching. Um if you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. Um I will definitely be having more videos on how to do specific things like make transparent backgrounds. Um and also I will be having some covers that will show up that you guys can take a look at. To show what's possible, these are also covers that I've done using GIMP. My favorites right here. This is my absolute favorite cover. <laughs> 18 layers in that one. Um, I didn't count how many of these were. I think these are pretty simple except for this one. All right. Well, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me on Facebook or my email, which is vibrantdesigns19 at gmail.com. You can also reach out to me on my website, which is vibrantdesignscovers.com. Thank you again, and have a great day.